Israel is continuing to target Hamas terror sites with precision strikes as they prepare for a ground invasion of Gaza. Time could be of the essence as we get new reports of Hamas's barbaric acts. The savages are now beheading babies. They are aggressive. They are very bad. They cut head of children, cut head of women, but we are stronger than them. You see the babies, the mother, the fathers in the bedrooms, in the protection rooms, and how the terrorists kill them. It's not a war. It's not a battlefield. It's a massacre. It's a terror act activity. Trey Yinks is in southern Israel. Trey, uh, there are people that are questioning the accuracy of this report about beheadings as if the previous bar barbarism wouldn't have predicted this activity. What kind of toll is this taking on the soldiers and the rescuers? Yeah, Greg, I don't think people would be questioning those reports if they've seen the amount of mutilated bodies we've seen in southern Israel. Thousands of Hamas fighters, it appears, on Saturday morning crossed into this country and killed everyone they could find. Those who didn't die from the initial attack were dragged back into Gaza, and that's why there are still dozens held captive beneath the Gaza Strip. The level of brutality just simply should not be questioned. People were killed in their homes, in their beds. They were killed in their, their bus stops, on benches. This was barbaric, and there's really no other way to describe what took place in southern Israel. And we're getting more and more information trickle in that they were not looking only for men of military age, for example, they were killing children, they were killing babies, they were killing women, they were dragging grandparents into the Gaza Strip. This is who these fighters are, and this is the type of terror that they looked to in inflict on the population here in southern Israel. Trey, it's Dana. One of the things Dan Hoffman said this morning uh, was that one of his former CIA supervisors said, the longer you have hostages out there, the longer they're out there, the harder it is to solve. And I'm wondering if you've heard anything more about any plans, ideas, possibilities of getting these hostages safely out of the Gaza Strip. He makes a great point. The Israelis and the Americans have no idea where these hostages are right now. And if you hear anything different, it's bad intelligence, because the Gaza Strip has a network of tunnels that they have no way to surveil deep, deep underground in places that, while the Israelis may have an idea they are tunneling in certain parts of the Strip, they simply can't identify where these people would have been taken. And with a 25-mile strip of land that's anywhere from three to seven miles long, there are a lot of places for Hamas and Islamic Jihad to hide these hostages. And that's not accounting for the high-rise buildings that there are in Gaza. 1.9 million people, a heavily populated area, and multiple different population centers. You have Gaza City, you have Rafa in the south, and you have Han Yunus in the middle. They could be anywhere. And so even if the Israelis launch this ground war into Gaza and they take territory, first of all, they're going to be engaged right away by Hamas and Islamic Jihad militants. We've seen it happen in the past. And secondly, they are going to have to search deep underground to try and find them, which has a whole challenge of its own. Do you believe there is a plan in place, a contingency operation, should they ever go into Gaza? I know they never wanted to go in, but if they have to come up with a plan, as well as mobilizing 300,000, I imagine to be effective and to be responsible, you might have to wait a little bit. I'm not sure time is on their side. Do you think they know what they're going to do and how to do it? Absolutely. There are contingency plans in the Israeli military echelon for these types of situations, especially when it comes to a ground operation in Gaza. Many times over the past several years, we've seen similar scenes at the border between Israel and Gaza, tanks and APC staging, thousands of soldiers, but not at this level. They have trained in these environments. There's actually a training center in the desert where they have built similar buildings to what they have in Gaza City so that the Israeli soldiers and some reserve forces will go to this center in the desert and they will work on clearing buildings. They will practice what it's like to take over a block inside of an urban battle environment and then hold that territory. And that's exactly what these, uh, these warriors are going to be doing when they enter Gaza 
when that decision is made. It will be a difficult battle, though, because of the urban battle environment. They will be faced not only with small arms fire, but RPGs and unexpected attacks like you've seen conducted by the Islamic State in the past. Hi, Trey. It's Jessica. Um, I'm curious. We're now on day four um, of this massacre. What do you think are the crucial differences from where we even were yesterday and what tomorrow is going to look like? I think the biggest difference is the shift in momentum on the northern front. Mm. Two Israeli soldiers died overnight from the incursions by Hezbollah militants. Mm. There was more rocket fire from Lebanon, not just targeting the Sheba Farms area, this contested area in the very northern part of Israel, but this time targeting the western border uh, between Israel and Lebanon. Additionally, we saw attempted mortar fire from Syria, and we talked about this yesterday on the program, the possibility of a multi-front conflict opening up for Israel. And already the Israelis have responded with artillery strikes in Syria. They're yeah. looking to send a clear message that if that front does open up, they're willing to strike anywhere at any time with all of the firepower they have. And as we heard today from the administration, the Americans stand with their Middle East ally, Israel, and they're willing to provide some level of support for this fight. Gotcha. Trey, it's Judge Janine. You know, with the urban warfare, and you talk about how difficult uh, that kind of warfare is, and they're having to clear out buildings, go into one, and then secure that building and check another, a tunnel, uh, and then fight possibly this multi-front war, uh, it's going to be extremely difficult for Israel to do this alone. Do you think that other countries will join, especially given the fact that there are American hostages that we're aware of? I believe there are French and German hostages as well. Are these countries going to be asked to come in and put boots on the ground if they're not already part of some special force? It's a really interesting question, because if you had this many American hostages or killed in another part of the world, there would be consideration to participate in any sort of activity to save them. And in this case, it simply will involve military action. Initially, what we are hearing from analysts in the region has to do with how the Israelis will fare early on. And so far, every indication is they will do well, but it will take time and they will suffer casualties. And so they're going to enter Gaza. They will hold those buildings in that territory. But from what we've seen in the past reporting in the Gaza Strip, many of these initial areas that they're going to enter, enter on the eastern and northern part of Gaza are heavily fortified with militants. We've seen how the Israelis operate in the West Bank. We were embedded with the Israeli army just a few weeks ago, and they faced a series of roadside bombs as they tried to enter the city of Tolkarim. And that's a city that is not as densely populated, filled with militants. There are militants there, but not as many as in Gaza. So that's the situation they face as they look to go into the Strip. Thank you. Thanks, Trey. Be safe. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.